Hey, Seth Garcia said, does Michigan control their destiny? Double O'Neill said, no. Uh, I disagree. Uh, Michigan was number seven in the first playoff rankings. Uh, you beat Penn State. You beat Ohio State. You win the Big Ten Championship. You're going to be in the playoff. Yes, they control their destiny. Okay, you win out, you're going to be there. Period. Speaking of Big Ten, Ohio State, 26, Nebraska 17, and Scott Frost. Brother, I. at what point do you stop relying on a 500 field goal kicker? This isn't the field goal kicker's fault. This is you are not playing to win. You're not being yep. aggressive. And that's not what we saw out of you at UCF. Like, this is yeah. ridiculous. He's the, coaching scared. Yes. And I, I, I really, there was a point yesterday. So I had Oklahoma, I had a Ohio State minus 14 and a half in this game because when I looked at the matchups, like, my numbers said that it should be Ohio State minus 11. But I looked at the matchups and I said, Okay, there are holes that Ohio State can take advantage of. The, the Nebraska defense coordinator, by the way, needs to be high up on a lot of job lists if if Scott Frost were to be fired. I think he's going to find a good landing spot because what he's been able to do with this defense has been pretty awesome. Like they, All of their games that they have lost this season, sans this one, have been one-possession losses. And it, how funny, by the way, at the end of the ball game. The, the, the last drive for Nebraska when they're trying to get down the field and score some points quick ends with an interception, right? Like yeah. it's, a, it's almost like clockwork. It's, it's, it's every, it's everything, you know, of Adrian Martinez. I am. This is a school. I kind of want to see Jeff Brown go to. It would be a lot of fun. I, I think he could fix it. I think, I think it would he's look a lot actual, like Purdue. He's a, he's a real, he's a real offensive mind. Not 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 one of those fake ones like Scott Frost is. He's a real offensive mind. He's an architect. Yeah, no, he definitely he is. Can, he can build it from the ground up. They uh they held Ohio State to two field goals in the second half. I just or sorry, three field goals in the second half. I I don't know what to make of this. I I don't think Ohio State is very good. Like we we all assumed that there were two sure things in college football this season and that was Ohio State's offense and Georgia's defense. And I don't know that that is the case. CJ Stroud had two interceptions in this game. He still passed for 405 yards. They at some point decided, "Yeah, hey, you know what? We they still ran the ball 30 times." But, you know, only 90 yards. They couldn't do anything against that Nebraska defense. Nebraska outrushed them. I, I just, you know, Nebraska won uh, won turnovers. They won rushing yards. They won penalty yards. They, I, I don't know. I know what else they could have done in this game, and that is not not play scared, like be aggressive, go go and try and get these points, try and do something. Because what does it matter if you lose by twenty one or if you lose by nine? Like you're you're fighting for your life here, and you know now. Nebraska's three and seven. You got nothing else really to play for other than pride in the last two ball games. What? I, <laughs> I don't know what to make of Nebraska. Like this is, <laughs> we we could talk about them being maybe the best three and seven team in the country. <laughs> what the hell does that get you? I mean, they're just not good. They're just not good. I mean, they they're they're not. And Scott hadn't got it done, and Adrian hadn't got it done, and it is time for somebody new to be in that seat. I don't know who that's going to be, but but I, I think almost anybody's got to be better than what you got. I I thought so. At one point yesterday, this game was twenty three to seventeen, and Nebraska drove down the field and and missed a field goal. Didn't take a shot. Like fourth and four at the Ohio State thirteen, and. You are down by six points, and you don't go for it. Your offense has been able to move the ball. It was an eleven play drive, netted him uh, fifty eight yards. Do Do you think like Do you think he would be coaching? Does he think that if he keeps these games close, he can save his job? Do you think that the Do you think that if he knew? He had already lost his job. He would be coaching differently, like an Ed Ordron situation. Do you think if he knew he was out no matter what, he would be he would be far more aggressive? But he thinks, well, if I keep these games close, you know, and I cover lines for my for my boosters and stuff of that nature, 
then maybe they'll bring me back next year and, and let me try to, you know, run it with somebody else at quarterback. Uh, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're thinking as a coach to be so conservative when you're bad. Like yeah. it's easy for these bad teams to be super aggressive, to be ultra aggressive, right? Yeah. Because you got nothing else to lose. If you play the game straight up, you're going to get beat. It's just a matter of how much. But if you if you break the rules, if you play unorthodox style, if you do things that they're not expecting to do, then you have a chance of pulling off a miracle. You have a chance of doing something special that everybody will remember forever. But playing the game straight up does you no good at all to just line up in a row, 11 on 11, let's go right at them. When it's time to punt, we punt. When we can kick a field goal, we settle for a field goal. If we don't make it, we don't make it. We tried. Like, this is not what you should be doing. This is how you play when you're a big dog. This is how you play when you're the guy that's playing from the front. This is not how you're supposed to play when you're a 14-point dog, when nobody's expecting you to be in these games. Well, Will, so there is something to the idea that maybe he hasn't really changed his mentality from being the big dog. Because when he was at Oregon as the offensive coordinator, he was a big dog. When he was at UCF, they were a big dog. And now they are uh, You don't think he knows that he's not? I think that I think by now looks, at this point in time you don't think he realizes he should. Like, I'm just a puppy playing with big boys. He he should know that. Uh, but I think part of the problem is that he has been able to keep some of these games so close, so that if we just have one thing bounce the right way for us, we can get this win. And if I coach the same way and we have something bounce our way, then we'll get it done. When and you're I, just depending on luck. That's that's just a fool's errand. This is why you right. got to go. This is why you can't be a coach. You can't hope that something happens for you. We're not paying you millions of dollars that you're going out here hoping that the ball bounces your way. We're paying you substantial amounts of money because you got to be able to figure out the best way to compete against guys, A, that are lesser than you, equal to you, and better than you. And you have to game plan differently. And if you draw up the same plan for all three of those opponents, then you ain't the guy that deserves to cash a check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, ben jumped in on the comments. Scott Frost is still there because of when he played there. He'll be gone next year, though. Double O'Neill said, or no, Seth said, does uh, does Michigan can their coach if they can't beat Ohio State? I don't think so this year. They've been pretty good. Modest Cowboy said, I big agree with you on Ohio State. True freshman quarterback's going to make huge mistakes in big games. Feels like their coaches are a bit worried to open it up since CJ is a freshman. Well, CJ's a, a sophomore, but this is his first year starting. Uh, but at this point in the season, he is he's a veteran. Like he yeah, has no, been nobody's this a practice. freshman today. Like at the bottom line. Like he's once you get to November, we're all done being underclassmen. Exactly. You've got enough reps on, unless this is your first start. Like somebody got hurt and you walked in the door. If you started all year, you you no longer get the underclassmen treatment. You should be a veteran by now. Yeah, uh, unless you're Chandler Morris, and, and we saw what Chandler Morris did. So, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Gary Lewis said trivia. The one year Frost was uh, offensive coordinator at Oregon, they had lesser talent and experience and didn't do well that lone season. And then Frost left after that season. Yeah, the offense was still pretty good there, but it's it's that mentality at Oregon where you are expected to be really, really good, and then he took the UCF job. So, yeah. You know, but he he was uh what a wide receivers coach I believe uh before that so like he he had been at Oregon for a little bit I I'm I'm so I don't know I just don't understand why he he does things the way he does I do want to give a shout out by the way Jackson Smith and Jigba 15 receptions 240 yards one touchdown for Ohio State absolutely showed out was the best player on on the field. Uh, yesterday. So Chris Olave, you know, seven receptions, 61 yards. Garrett Wilson was out for this game. I don't know that it would have mattered had he played. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.